Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, back with A61 here. Today we're going to look at some area of bounded region um, shortcuts. So these are kind of fun. Um, they can save you a lot of time. I especially like them on the no calculator parts. And you can see how it applies to your homework that I gave you guys too. You can try it out on there. Let's take a look at a, a sample no calculator problem. So the problem is find the area of the bound region bounded. Okay, so here's the problem. We want the area of the region bounded by y equals negative x squared plus 4 and the line y equals negative 5. So first off, um, with no calculator, I kind of want to sketch this to get an idea of what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to solve this the normal way first, then I'm going to show you the shortcut, and I'll let you see which way you think is better. Okay. So the first graph, y equals negative x squared plus 4, right? We think about our parent function here is um, a parabola, but we know it's shifted up 4, and it's also going to open down. We know it's opening down because it's negative x squared. So it's going to look like a down, right? It's going to open down, have a y-intercept of 4. It's going to look something like this. That's the first function. Y equals negative 5 is going to look like this. Again, when it's y equals a constant, that's a horizontal line. X equals a constant is a vertical line. So we get a line that looks something like this. And I'm looking for the area of that bounded region. It kind of looks like a bullet or something like that. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is figure out those intersections. Right now, again, I'm going to solve it the way that we're used to integral left to right of top function minus bottom function. So I need to figure out where do these things intersect. Well, to figure that out, I'm just going to set the equations equal to each other. I'm going to set negative x squared plus 4 equal to negative 5. Then I'm going to get negative x squared equals negative 9. Divide by negative 1 gives me x squared equals 9. Gives me x equals plus or minus 3. So I know that these intersections are uh, oops, somewhere. There we go. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so doing it the old way, I would do, again, I have to see that this top function is negative x squared plus 4. This bottom function is the function negative 5. So I would have done this. My area would equal the integral from negative 3 to 3 of the top function, negative x squared plus 4, minus the bottom function, negative 5 dx. Right, just distributing that negative here, <clears throat> I'm going to have the integral from negative 3 to 3 of negative x squared plus 4 plus 5 dx. Simplifying that one more time, I'm going to get the integral from negative 3 to 3 of negative x squared plus 9. Okay. Now to solve this thing, I'd have to bump and divide. I'm going to bump my power up to 3 and divide by 3 to get negative 1 third. 
x cubed plus 9x. And I'm evaluating this thing from negative 3 to 3. So I'm going to plug in 3 first, which will give me negative 1 third 3 cubed plus 9 times 3 minus negative 1 third negative 3 cubed plus 9 times negative 3. So again, I'm plugging 3 in for x for this part, plugging negative 3 in for x for this part. Okay, so now I got to figure this thing out by hand. Right when I'm doing this, I get 3 cubed is 27. 27 times negative a third is negative 9. So I'm going to get negative 9 plus 27. Negative 9 plus 27. Over here, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 27 times negative 1 third is positive 9 minus 27. Negative 9 plus 27 is 18 minus 9 minus 27 is negative 18. And I get 18 minus negative 18, which we know is 18 plus 18, which is 36. That's one way I could do this problem if I did it like I did in the video last night. But when we look at this, we should see that negative x squared plus 4 is an even function. We want to find this whole area, right? Since this function is an even function, it's symmetrical about the y axis. So, what I notice is this area and this area are exactly the same because the function is symmetrical about the y axis. So I could make this a little bit easier by just solving for the, the blue area and doubling it. So think about this. I could just say the area of equal. We are going to find the area of the blue. Well, now my integral is only going to go from 0 to 3. But I'm going to have to double that area to get my full thing. And again, it's going to be negative x squared plus 4 minus negative 5. Once again, this is going to simplify to integral 0 to 3 of negative x squared plus 9. It's my same function, okay? But what's nicer is I get to integrate with this 0 rather than having both a 3 and a negative 3. Right. Let me just give myself a little more space here. So my answer is going to be, my antiderivative will be the same, negative 1 third x cubed plus 9x. But plugging in the 0 makes this thing way nicer. So I'm going to get two parentheses, negative one third three cubed plus nine times three. Right? And then it's going to be minus zero. And that's the part that makes this a nice shortcut. So once again, three cubed is 27. 27 divided by negative three is negative nine. So I've got two parentheses, negative nine plus 27. 2 times 18, which is 36. And as you can see, I get the same answer here, but it was much easier. Well, I could have also found the area of that green region. I could have found this green region's area and doubled that as well. I decided to go with the integral 0 to 3 because I like working with positive numbers rather than the integral from negative 3 to 0. Okay? 
But you can do it either way and double it. But again, don't forget to double it. Don't just find half of it and report 18 as your answer, because your answer has to be 36. OK. Um, another thing we can do is this. If I had a function, where let's say I have a red function f of x. And a blue function g of x. Okay. So let's say I wanted to find the area of these two regions. I'll call this region R and this region X. Okay, so let's say this is a calculator one. Okay. Now, these things are not necessarily symmetrical, so I can't just find R and double it, okay? That rule only works if we have even functions and we know it's symmetrical. This thing is not symmetrical, okay? But this is like the problem, kind of like the problem we did today. So here's the thing. We have to find A, that intersection X value. We have to find B, and we have to find We'd have to find those three intersections and it doing it the old way. Now, again, the area of R plus S okay. what we could do is this do the integral from A to B of, well, from A to B. F is on top and G is on bottom. So it has to be integral A to B of F of X minus G of X. Plus the integral. Oops. Sorry, my whiteboard screen cut out a little bit here. Get that back. Plus the integral from B to C. And then for B to C, now G is on top and F is on the bottom. So I'd have to do G of X minus F of X. And that would work just well. And the reason we have to switch there, right, is because we want to keep that number positive. F minus G is positive for the region A to B. But from B to C, G minus F would be positive. But is there something we can do that always makes the difference positive? Well, what we could do, another option, and I'll just think about, is this. Okay. I could do the integral from A to C. Okay? Integral from A to C, and I can now do the absolute value of either f of x minus g of x or g of x minus f of x. And that absolute value, what it does is it just takes whatever f minus g is for that region and makes it positive. So you don't even have to worry about which one. Absolute value f of x minus g of x. Both of these would give the same solution to this problem. Um, and it's kind of up to you. Sometimes the calculator takes longer to do these absolute value ones. So it might not always be a time saver. But it's kind of an interesting way to think about it, taking the absolute value of the difference there. All right, that's it for today. Talk to you guys later. Two chains, bye.